the universe is expanding, but also the expansion is getting faster and faster. Hi, I'm Ian Moss. I'm Professor of Cosmology at Newcastle University. So I started many years ago uh, as a student of Stephen Hawking in Cambridge from a very young child. I used to look up at the sky and look at the stars or look, or look at the moon and just wonder, you know, what are they? And my earliest recollections are that I wanted to be an astronomer. People will tell you at that age, be realistic, <laughs> think of a real job. An astronomer is not a real job. And it's true, very few people make it, but I think if you really want to do something, it's amazing what you can achieve if you just persist and don't give up. I always wanted to be an astronomer. No, I'm a theoretical astronomer. I specialize on the very early universe, the Big Bang. So my interest is, you know, what caused the Big Bang? Um, what was the nature of the Big Bang? Um, how did the universe begin? How did time begin? Those kind of fundamental questions. And then you need to link this fundamental theory with the real world. And that comes through trying to predict the results of observation. So it's all about linking what happened in the early universe to the universe we see around us today. I try to sort of bridge that gap between elementary theory and the sort of real world observations. When it comes to the Big Bang itself, all we have is theory and there's no shortage of theories. People have different views, for example, maybe the universe is cyclic, maybe the universe expands, contracts, and then has a, a Big Bang and then expands and contracts in a sequence like that. Maybe lots of universes are formed and we're just one universe among many. There's lots of theories like that. You can develop those theories to a certain extent and try to look if there is some way of distinguishing be between them uh, using astronomical observations, but it's, that's, that's very difficult. If you come a few minutes after the Big Bang, then the chemical elements are formed. Now, the theory and the observations are, are in very good agreement. So I think most astronomers would believe that we understand very well what happened a few minutes after the Big Bang. But my work pushes that to a fraction of the second after the Big Bang, when there's very little we can say, but we can sort of make some predictions about what the outcome of these theories will be in terms of astronomical observations today. There was a Big Bang. We don't know what the theory of the Big Bang is, that something is unknown. But very shortly after that, we believe that the universe started to expand very rapidly at a constant rate. We believe that after a very short period of time, all the matter and energy in the universe was produced. We think it was produced directly from what we call the vacuum. That is, the universe was created from nothing. We have very little observational evidence for, except during these very early stages of the universe, there were little quantum fluctuations, little fluctuations um, that are present all the time because of the theory called quantum mechanics. And these fluctuations have, um, have evolved through time, and eventually they become the seeds of the structure in the universe we've seen today. For example, um, these little fluctuations eventually become the fluctuations that are necessary for the formation of galaxies. One possibility is that the universe is cyclic. This is an old idea. Uh, the universe expands and contracts, expands and contracts in infinite number of cycles. That's not impossible. Another idea that's much more recent is there's sort of a mother universe that's continually giving birth to universes like our own. We would be just one of many universes and they're all being budded off from this single mother universe. And in fact, in this theory of inflation I was talking about, this is in many ways the most natural scenario. Many people think this is a crazy idea. It used to believe that the expansion of the universe was slowing down, and it could have even turned around, and the universe could just collapse. But nowadays, it seems like the universe is going to expand forever at a, at a constant rate, and we'll just get more and more dilute. Um, that gets into this question of, uh, is the universe finite or infinite in extent? Yet, we still don't know the answer to that. Some people don't like the idea of a Big Bang because they don't like the idea of a beginning. Other people don't like the ideas of infinity. If you don't have a Big Bang, then time stretches back infinitely far into the past. So which are you more comfortable with? An origin in time or an infinite amount of time? They're both a little bit uncomfortable, right? The same with space. You know, which is more comfortable? To have a finite universe in which you feel bounded, maybe a little bit imprisoned, or an infinite universe which goes on forever? I hope there's always going to be people who are going to be trying to find answers to these questions.